Hey guys, Nut and Fancy, the date, November 2009. Another great blade coming your way for your consideration. It's going to fall into the EDC category. Uh, I'll get to this one here in just a second. But real quick, I need to kind of move towards, at least maybe with certain gear items, a more raw video review. In other words, less produced. The reason is I need to start clearing out the backlog of knives and many, many other gear items that I really need to get the information out on. So bear with me if it's not totally produced with inserted pictures, videos, lots of up in the mountain testing. It just, it's tough to do. And my video production has slowed to a point that I'm not happy with it. I need to start cranking it out. Why? To get the information out there. And there's lots and lots to do. So bear with me. Sorry if it's not, uh, you know, totally produced by the nut and fancy, but the information I hope will be useful to you and tight, and that's my main goal. And if it ain't, I ain't gonna put it out there. By the way, you're looking at the Benchmade 890 Torrent. Previously reviewed in the Nut and Fancy Project, of course. What an outstanding EDC slash tactical folding knife this is. Assisted opening, 154 crucible metal steel. Great blade shape, fit and finish. Um, you know, G10 handles, striking pommel. All the things I said in the review, they all stand. Uh, clips mounted on the wrong side for me. But other than that, great knife. Kind of an expensive knife, though. Like I said in the review, let me get a drink. About $100. For a lot of dudes, that may be just a little bit much. We got lots of things com you know, competing for our dollars these days. So great knife, uh, maybe expensive for some. So when I can find a knife that's similar to this one and offers to me the same type of utility and capabilities for about half price with similar quality, I'm excited, and that's what this review is about. Enter, drum roll, or whatever. You know it's gonna be just me making the sound effect this time. How about a whip for the introduction of the Buck Vantage series? Comes in three different models. You're looking at the Buck Vantage Select in 420HC steel. The next version is the Buck Vantage Pro. Make sure I don't get these wrong. That comes in S30V steel. And then finally, one that I do not have on the table, uh, Buck Vantage Avid, I think it is. And that comes in 13C26 Sandvik steel. I do have three of them here with me. And here's a smaller version of the Buck Vantage Select. Lots of times, those nomenclatures on the Buck knives confuse me. I said that when I did my Bantam knife reviews, so it's hard to keep them straight. So I apologize, apologize if I screw them up. But let me say right now, these knives are exciting to me. Why is that? Because they offer similar capabilities to more expensive options, kind of like the Benchmade 890. Okay, now these are not assisted opening knives, the 890 was, um, but they're very fast and balanced. We'll look at, let's look at the Vantage Select first off in 420HC steel. And I'll talk right now as to the steel. Um, I don't think it's the best steel out on the market. There's lots of opinions about it. Excuse me. Um, there's lots of dudes that uh, you know have lots of information and probably a lot more data points on the steel than I do. I think it's adequate in roll. And the roll that I will call this knife, both the large and the small, is going to be primarily everyday carry blade. Okay, um, But that blade shape, first off, let me make a little detour here. Outstanding. I love the clip blade shape shape on the Buck Vantage series. Very nice. Hollow ground blades on all of them. Nice belly. Good uh, swedge running down. They have a polished flat up here with their logo. There's your model number right here on the reverse side. Nothing on the select model. On the pro model it shows a Bose heat treat logo. But I love the blade shape on that. Just outstanding. Kind of a modified clip, if you will, shape. This is very typical for buck knives, by the way. You see the vertical striations in the grinding process. We've seen that before. You remember my Cirrus series? Uh, actually, I think it's just one video where I reviewed this. This is Tactical Doodle's blade. Fitzson would love this, wouldn't he? The skulls, I love that decoration. Um, but we have lots of use in the Nut and Fancy family with a 420HC steel. And actually, I find it to be pretty adequate. Uh, probably along the lines of AUS-8, AUS-8 steel. Easy enough to sharpen. No, it doesn't keep a blade or you know an edge forever. 
but I like it when they're easy to sharpen because then I can touch them up quickly. But you can, we can see the same characteristic vertical striations in the buck, buck blade. Um, and they do create a little bit of drag in the horizontal you know, orientation. This way I'm talking. I don't find it to be a huge deal. If I were to have my choice, of course, I would want machining comparable to, where did that 890 go? There it is, to the 890. I mean, look at that fit and finish. But, you know, pick your poison. How much money do you want to spend? Do you want a nice stone wash finish like that? If you do, you're going to pay some more money. Okay? So, this knife, by the way, the Vantage Select, around $20. Okay? Again, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but $20? Amazing. That is a lot of value for the money. I think Newgram was selling, uh, where did it go? For about $24. You know, my friends at yourcornerstore.com, I think, are currently sold out. Watch for them. They're selling it for around 20 and that is an amazing deal. Uh, look at what you get. Again, the blade shape outstanding. Nope, we don't have jimping on the top. <laughs> I'll get that, way, get that out of the way immediately. Let me go to the Pro model and show you what it looks like unmodified. It's just smooth, and yeah, it sucks. I, I wish they would jimp it. That may add cost to what is otherwise a very affordable blade. Okay, and no jimping, of course, on the bottom. Um, but to me, that's a minor quibble because of the roll of the knife. Knife, It's an EDC blade to me. Uh, by the way, you guys uh, bought these two knives with you clicking on my ads. Okay, I use that money to get this type of gear. So thank you for your support, and I will continue to do so. That's my job. And that is actually my preferred way of getting an item, going out and buying it. That way I'm, I don't have to waste a lot of time getting it from a dude getting it back to the dude or you know feeling like I'm stepping on toes if I rail on an item if I've borrowed it from a manufacturer I love independence in the project and I'm willing to pay for it I love it uh, sometimes I keep the item sometimes I turn it I'll tell you this uh, I want to keep these items because they're awesome and thank you for that um, the Vantage knives are just excellent uh, there's your deployment hole right there but they are a flipper design again unassisted great balance though if you guys are familiar with the flipper design, lots of Kershaw's have it, um, CRKT's have it. It works, and I don't mind at all. I find it be very quick. I don't need an assisted opening knife, dudes. Um, I like it, um, but I don't need it. I'll show you one of my favorites here in a second. But it comes out fast, locks up solidly. I have about four examples here on the table. One I did borrow. Because um, I want to, I want to tell you why I did here in a little bit. But it locks up solidly, side to side, no up and down play. Very nice. I mean, I really don't have any issues. The pivot didn't have to be adjusted as it came from the factory. Um, the edge on the select model came extremely sharp. The one on this one, the Pro model, which is in the higher quality S30V steel, we've talked about that a lot in the project. Uh, great edge capability. A little bit harder to sharpen adequate rust resistance but I was not impressed with the edge out of the box on this this one I touched up I think um, with the ceramic rod I have two of these pros on the table again I'll show you why here in a sec um, anyways that did not impress me I think uh, some other guys said all theirs the S30V models came extremely sharp I didn't see it sorry um, it sucked and it needed some work strangely enough the 420HC didn't have that problem um, and while we're talking about the steel here, like I said, we've had great experience with it. From all indications and in looking at the Buck website, this is supposed to have a very good Buck heat treatment, a la Paul, Paul Bowes. Okay, at least that's what the logo shows. But, you know, look in the comments. There's guys who are going to be a lot more expert at Buck knives than I am. And I'm, if it did have that, I think they'd be bragging about it, just like they do on the S30V version. The Pro is on the bottom, the Select is on the top, and notice that they put the Tang stamp there, showing that it has a Bose heat treat on it. Uh, and Buck, when they do that heat treat, really gets the most out of whatever metal it's touching. By the way, notice the differences in finishes between the S30V on the bottom, 420HC on the top. You can see the striations are pretty much minimized on the S30V steel. Um, finer finish, more satin in nature and there's no drag at all. It's more polished, higher quality steel. This one, incidentally, the Buck Vantage Pro runs about 40 bucks. And I'm gonna throw out some names there. I saw that at Cutlery Shop. 
uh, com. That's PPE. I'll annotate that site there. Tell them nothing fancy sent you. And get in line and get it. It's totally worth $40. For that type of steel? Are you kidding me? S30V for 40 bucks. Also, the handle material is a huge upgrade on the Pro model. Sculpted G10 with a very cool inset buck logo on there. Isn't that handsome? Doesn't provide a ton of traction though. Okay, you can't get everything, I guess, at least not for 40 bucks. Um, but it's handsome. Incidentally, the Vantage Select has a Zytel handle. I like it. I think it's also handsome. It's affordable, it's tough, it's rugged, and Zytel works great. You know, is it you know possessing the second type of cool for a lot of dudes? Probably not. But it's half price in this. Both these knives are affordable, extremely affordable, incredible. Um, and by the way, you can take those slabs off if you need to. Thank you uh, for that. You know, if you need to service it, uh, service it. If you've dunked it in seawater, rock on. Get your mini torques and go to work. You can adjust the pivot point too. And this is going to bring us to a bad part that I've noticed about the Buck Vantage. Incidentally, you guys may be wondering, there's my uh, run of skateboard tape up on the spine of this Vantage Select Large. Case to give a little bit of traction top side. Real easy modification. You've seen me do that before. Uh, I showed you the S30V version, what it looks like unmodified, of course. Simple, simple. But uh, getting back to a negative thing about the knives, I always keep it real with you guys. The centering and the hand handle on the blades seems to be an issue with the Buck Vantages. This is a select model 420HC steel. You can see it's not well centered. Okay. Uh, and uh, we ordered two, so here's the second one. This is the S30V version, the Pro model, and it's really bad. It's actually touching the liner, or they're pretty darn close. Uh, I jumped into the forums to see if this had been an issue with a bunch of dudes, and I did read there that guys have had problems with the quality controls on the Buck Vantages. Uh, some guys are saying, well, I, mod you know, I tweaked my pivot point. I was able to center up the blade. You know and center it and handle uh, I wasn't able to do that I actually went as far as changing all kinds of different you know uh, tension levels on the pivot point so it's still rapidly deploying didn't work I even reversed it seeing if maybe that could send it you know the right direction nope you can actually hear it hitting the liner listen see that that's unacceptable guys I'm sorry uh, this night's going to go back to buck give them an opportunity to fix it. I always recommend you do that. And every manufacturer can have issues. I don't care who it is, gun and knife manufacturers, they can have quality issues. Don't flush them down the toilet right away. Give them a chance to rectify it. I would want that option if I was the manufacturer. They may be unaware that they were shipping knives out that way. Uh, I hate, I know what you guys are gonna say. You're like, well, they shouldn't be unaware. They should be doing quality control. And you know what, I agree, they should. Um, it shouldn't go out your warehouse like that. That's jackballed. That gets to why I have a second one. Uh, I went to the hassle of uh, getting one from a buddy, uh, and I because I want to compare and say, hey, you know, do you have that? Yeah, I got it. And uh, so he had me mod his out with grip tape as too, uh, grip tape as well. And this is his pro model. And look, it also is favoring that side of the handle. So a little bit jacked up. Now if it's a little bit skewed, maybe about like that, I don't care. But when it's rubbing the liner like it appears to be on these pro models, it's unacceptable. Um, so I think both these are going to go back to buck, give them the opportunity to make it right, and hopefully they can correct that. Um, and again, from the forums, I gathered that uh, they have been making improvements in the quality of the Vantage. Uh, and I didn't spend a lot of time there because, sorry, I don't have a lot of time. Uh, but there might be some other quality control issues I'm not aware of. But the centering and the handle, take it as a data point. It's what's going on. And it's just interesting to me that the more inexpensive model is, doesn't have it. Okay, the 420HC steel version. I wish I had an AFID model here. But honestly, it would look just like these. You know, it has uh, those sculpted G10 handles, which incidentally, Buck calls diamond wood. Okay, that's their brand name for it. But uh, let's get back to the good stuff, okay? I think even if you ordered one of these and you said, uh, you know, I, you got to keep in mind that I'm kind of anal with my knives. If you haven't figured that out, then 
Um, maybe you haven't watched him, but that's just me. You know, I think a lot of knife collectors, users are. And so to us, that's un unacceptable. To the average user, they probably probably wouldn't even notice it. You know, and it doesn't really change the function and capability of the Vantage blade. But for me, it just kind of bugs me, weighs on me. Um, getting back to the good stuff, and this is huge. The blade, sh or the handle shape is handsome. Look how good the lines are on that. Again, kind of harkening back to the Torrent, the Benchmade. Same materials, incidentally. The G10, sculpted G10. I love the lines that they milled in here. I think those are very aesthetic. And then we flip it over on the other side. And there is another huge selling point for the Vantage series. You guys know, and if you don't, I'll tell you now, I love deep pocket clips for my EDC blades and for lots of my tactical folders as well. It makes the knife so it doesn't scratch things, pop out of your pocket, get lost, and do all those other things that we don't want them to be doing. Uh, this is a 10 out of 10 in pocket clip designs. You know, I don't know if they've been watching TMP, but when I talked about uh, pocket clips at length in many of my gear reviews last year, specifically when I talked about this knife, my reference, one of my all-time great everyday carry blades, this is a SOG Flash 1, talked about their bayonet pocket clip and how I wish they had more of these um, in, you know, I don't know, in blades. It's finally good to see that happening, at least in the Vantage. And I think this is actually a superior pocket clip to even the SOG Flash series. It's thicker, it's stronger as you can see. It's uh, secured on the top with two Torx screws. Um, polished, good looking, not obtrusive. It's angled perfectly. This is a perfect pocket clip. Okay, and it's worth looking past this in order to get that. It just carries extremely well. And you know what, I wanna use, let me grab a little pair of pants here. These are gonna be a pair of Tack Light Pro Pants. And I'm going to use a technique that my friend Cutlery Lover uses. And he, I think I watched a video of his about a year and a half ago. And he had a pair of pants that he threw on the table. And he kind of showed how the knife buried in the pocket. So, Cutlery Lover, I give you full credit for this idea. Thank you, bro. And anyways, I want to do this, though, because it shows how the sucker buries. Look at that. And again, that's a dedicated knife pocket on this Tack Light Pro Pants, previously reviewed in the Nut and Fancy Project. Isn't that outstanding? Now some guys will say, well I like something protruding so I can, you know, pop the knife out, or the knife out. I say that's nonsense. All you have to do is reach down here and just push, push the blade out. Just, you know, run it up, easy enough. For an EDC blade, in other words, a blade that I don't need to access super quickly, very easy to do. Very light, very much like the Sock Flash 1, right? Buries deep, carries well, securely, doesn't get lost that way. So 10 out of 10, A plus on the pocket clip on the Vantage series of blades. Just excellent, excellent. Um, here's a smaller one, by the way, and it does come in a smaller version. If I think about it, I'll annotate the model numbers here, but this is a Vantage Select 420 HC Steel small version. This is an outstanding uh, everyday carry blade. Let's look at the centering issues. I know you guys are wondering about that. Uh, not horrible. You can see it's kind of favoring, you know, one side. I can live with that. You know, I can live. As long as it's, you know, if it's rubbing the liner, unacceptable. Uh, would I change anything about the deployment hole? No, I wouldn't. Not on this style of flipping knife. This is a flipper, dudes. Okay, it's not really an assisted opening. It is a flipping knife. So primarily, we're going to be deploying it like ish. Okay, so I don't need to use the deployment hole. If I want to, I can. It sure does work. No, it's not the largest deployment hole out there. I like Spidey's much better. Does work though, does work. This knife, uh, about $20. And here's the box from Newgram on that one. As you can see, and yourcornerstore.com even sells it for less. That puts it uh, in a category which is much less expensive than my other reference blade, Sock Flash 1 much cheaper and yet very effective in roll. And I think the steels between these two, that's OS 8, this is 420HC. For what you guys are gonna be doing, there's not gonna be a lot of difference. You won't know the difference. You know, rust resistance, wear, you won't, you're not gonna know the difference. And they both perform in my, my mind very similarly. Great blade, look at that blade shape though. And let me just 
show you the flash one by way of comparison real quick very similar in size I didn't talk about the weights can't believe I've waited this long 1.2 ounces that's why I still love the sock flash one nothing's changed that no this doesn't replace it I still love them both um, but this is about two ounces I think let me look at my notes if I took wrote that down if I'm wrong I'll annotate it uh, so 2.4 ounces I'm sorry and the number on that 3212 this one right here great blade shape hollow ground just gorgeous lightweight the Vantage Select four ounces uh, I would really like it if they skeletonized the liner they don't probably because it's going to add cost right you can see it down there solid stainless steel liners very thin some guys may have issue with how thin that liner is you know and I think someone was calling it a frame lock to me it's I know that you know uh, it's not it has an external Zytel scale to me that's a liner lock but it's an EDC blade that's what I categorize this knife as so to me that's adequate and you can see how where it locks up on the rear of the tang uh, I don't see any problems there and all the knives that I've examined in the series they're all excellent how about the ergonomics I already mentioned the lack of jimping there an easy fix I've shown you there uh, in hand it feels pretty darn good good balance you know comfortable in hand and kind of reminiscent uh, of the grip uh, on a 1911 don't you think that vantage grip there I think it's good looking I like the flat portion here which allows the attachment of that outstanding pocket clip on the back side just excellent if we can square away the quality issues on the buck vantage series as I've shown you specifically the pro and maybe some other models then I think it remains a very viable option to a lot of other blades you know I reviewed this one earlier the mini barrage by Benchmade what an outstanding knife that is is 3.8 ounces but it's kind of expensive you know hovering around the 70 80 dollar mark almost twice as much as this knife here assisted opening relatively the same weight POU of course um, but man it's good to have options and this is going to be a viable option for you if I were to choose right off the bat which one I would like best uh, of the three models and I'm talking the Buck Vantage Select the Pro or the Avid model I would probably go with the Select the $20 one you see right there in the middle of the screen if I'm going to use it as an EDC blade and hard use it I mean thrash that thing it's only 20 bucks 24 wherever you're going to get it you won't feel bad that's the beauty of having an EDC blade that is affordable is that you won't feel guilty when you put it under hard use if you want a better steel a better finish on the blade then go with the S30V the pro model uh, maybe going with the Avid model in the 13C26 Sandvik steel which is a very fine grained uh, high performing steel from what I can find and what I have experience with those blades that I own that have it just excellent uh, high value well designed handsome perfect pocket clip uh, a choice of blade materials a choice of handle materials I mean that is uh, actually knife making at its best don't you think uh, giving the user uh, a very high value knife with uh, all those options available to him or her outstanding great gift idea if I found one of these in my stocking I would be stoked I'd be going dudes nicely done I love it so the Buck Vantage is a uh, series all three models at least the two ones that I'm here seeing here the select and the pro very positive review by Net and Fancy the quality issues the blade centering I think we can resolve those uh, I may do an update vid uh, when Buck returns them to me and I'll tell you what happens. Uh, what I don't want them to do is send me back knives that have that ex same, same exact issue going on. Okay, so Buck, if you're watching, don't send me back blades that have that. I want to see this right here or close to it. Okay, so fix it. And if you do, uh, this knife could be a 10 out of 10. You heard me right, a 10 out of 10. Price considered. We have to consider price. Nothing fancy. What do you know? A more raw, as quick as I can make it, review on an outstanding blade option, the Buck Vantage. We'll see you. Happy holidays. Out.